South African rugby has been in the doldrums regarding transformation for many years. Since returning from international isolation some 27 years ago, only two black South Africans have coached the Springboks. Now, at the root of the transformation conundrum are rugby unions who deprive black coaches of opportunities at provincial and franchise level. Ronald Masinda asks the pertinent questions around the issue. They don't believe in, 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 in our people, they don't believe in the way we think. And I don't think they believe that we are human beings too. A bizarre statement or a sad reality of where SA rugby finds itself in. One thing's for certain that the game will continue to be divided along racial lines if issues of transformation are not addressed. South African rugby has only had three black head coaches in the history of Super Rugby. Furthermore, black coaches are also hard to find at Curry Cup level. So, what does it really take to make it as a professional coach of color in SA Rugby? To be able to explain what you need to be a successful coach in South Africa would imply there's a, there's a structure or, or a pathway in place. The simple truth is there isn't. A level 3 SA Rugby coaching certificate is what's required to coach professionally. While a number of black coaches have achieved their badges, reaching the echelons of pro-level rugby comes with many stumbling blocks. You know, the question of how you sort of make your climb is then, you know, a, a, a sort of a, a, a triumph of sort of using your wits about you, um, you know, in terms of what context do you have in the system and, you know, who likes you in, in the system that you're operating in. If you look at, you know, if you look at the Lions last year, I've got nothing against the guy, but they employed a conditioning coach as, as head coach. Um, this was at the expense of a young black coach who had coached, you know, who had coached sort of as head coach of their junior teams sort of in in a build-up hoping you know hoping to get to that position so there's a lot of those kinds of um, sort of inconsistencies in how the system works to the point where I'm not sure you can even call it a system well you address such issues you are perceived as a troublemaker that's a sad part when it comes to rugby in this country you are vocal you are a troublemaker and um, a person like myself I was once greeted in a presidential suite by a vice president he greeted me and said hey you mucker and like you know troublemaker like really in Gauteng the Soweto rugby club says they are still grappling with basic necessities 27 years since they were formed it's either you shut up keep quiet take whatever that we're giving you or die your slow death as I've said that even now they are paying for nothing. You're gonna pay, we're gonna pay in 2019 for our first aid. We're gonna pay referees, and then we must see to finish even how do we develop coaches. So, you tell me what kind of environment is that then that we're gonna play rugby or participate in rugby? Due to the financial strengths, I know back in, back in the day, uh, almost every single club in this unit uh, was assisted by this unit. Uh, due to the financial constraints, uh, we union are no longer in the South position to provide that uh, that they have provided in the past. The head of training and development at the Lions says opportunities are out there for black coaches if they are willing to bide their time. The challenge is that because professional rugby, I think there's a, there's a high emphasis on, on sudden success. So it's up for us, uh, up to us as unions and as a rugby to ensure we create a pathway. And we need to be patient because success is, is not a one-way street. For me, yes. I feel I was sidelined because of my color, and I don't know what else is there, because for, for the fact that I was a fully equipped coach to coach, to be a backline coach, but now a guy that is only doing kicking and never coached is getting placed in my place, then I don't know what's happening, because how, I, how do they explain that? Sinoganto's promising coaching career at the Cheetahs came to a premature end. 31-year-old Ganto says he was overlooked to coach at a higher level due to the color of his skin. Other coaches pushed me out. A guy that I was coaching with, which, which is he was the forwards coach, he gets to go up, but I stayed down. 
2015, SA Rugby made a promise that the sport would have a 50% black representation by 2019. If we just um, almost uh, uh, put the emphasis on, on, the, on the franchises and on the unions and say bring the black coaches through, you know, sometimes we won't get the result that we want to. So we're working really closely with them and trying to get guys to coach at the highest level. If coaches doesn't come through the franchises because we don't control that at all, you know, the franchise decide that. In that case, of franchises given too much power by SA Rugby. For some, it ceases to be amazing that administrators are still reluctant to solve the basics. At the end of the day, the way sporting teams have been run for years is you give someone an opportunity, ample opportunity, fair enough opportunity, and after you've done that, you back them to succeed until they prove to you beyond a shadow of doubt that they cannot succeed. Just the fair chance, that's all. The coaching saga continues. Ronald Masinda, Johannesburg.